All right, welcome back to the Rugby League Guru Podcast. We've got something special for you this week, one that I am super excited about. Obviously, you know I am big on my CBAs and whatnot and young kids coming through. But once the NRL season starts, I'll be honest with you, I find it hard to sort of keep up to date with it all uh, every week in, week out. As you guys know, my brother has been in Howard Matt's SG Ball last year, so I've sort of been on the ground a lot more over the last years, getting a little bit harder. I'm still keeping on top of it and, and keeping track of certain players and whatnot, but... I've been very lucky, and especially you guys have been even luckier that over the last year or two, uh, the short ball has emerged on Instagram. One of my favorite pages, to, by far and away, one of the most underrated content creators in the game. And I've got the short ball here. Jacob, welcome on, mate. Well, thanks for that intro, mate. That was very uh, kind of you. Some nice words. Thanks yeah. for bringing me into this studio, too. It's very nice in here. Yeah, it's like good gear, old, isn't it? It's good yeah, fun like in the here. old stuff. Yeah, it's just, it's like, like a little rugby league museum. Uh, but, mate, like I, I genuinely, like for me, um, you know, obviously like the CBA stuff has really blown up, which has been fantastic. But once the NRL season starts, it is brutally tough to watch the eight games to the extent that I do and then be able to fucking get to four grounds on a Saturday afternoon to watch games. So your page, I absolutely love the content. And I've, but I've been really happy to see people getting around it as well because it's – like from from the other side where we sit from the content point of view, it's hard with Harold Matz and SG Ball because every five years the audience completely changes because kids come through, they move on, there's new people, like you, there's a new group that are watching their friends and everything. So it's a really hard audience to engage and I've always thought there's something there but I just don't have the time to be able to pull it off and, man, I think you're absolutely nailing it. And I, I like, I for one – can fully appreciate how much time and effort it takes and, and I respect it so fucking much. Um, it must be a lot of work though. Oh, yeah, 100% getting out to all the grounds of a weekend, mm. um, covering all base and then just doing my own stuff as well. Like I've yep. got um, work and uni and stuff like that too. So, um, But getting out to the grounds, I, I really enjoy it though. Like it's just going down, you're watching footy. I'm usually surrounded by a couple of mates. If yep. I'm not, I'm sort of talking to people around the grounds, trying to as well find out as much as I can because – there's not many sources that you can get into for a uh, for Howard Matz and SG Ball. So it's tough. Like there aren't many, but once you're actually in that circle, there's almost too many. Once you're in there, like yeah. the people just the people that are involved with that grade at that time just absolutely love it. And as I said, in five years' time, it'll be a different group. But the the engagement at that level is sensational, and it you know it, it's sort of. The, when, when, when you're watching at that age group, it's uh, for me anyway, I, I feel like, you know, like you can tell it's not NRL. It's a little bit closer to sort of 90s rugby league almost. Like it's a, it's a lot more polished obviously, <laughs> but it's just it, – it's it's a lot more sort of instinctive I guess you could say because you've got yeah. these young kids that are still, you know, tr trying their hand at all different stuff. I, I absolutely love being down there and some of the suburban grounds you get to go to as well, absolutely unreal and, you know – the, the beauty of it is, and this is what I love about their season, which I think the NRL could take on board, 10-week season? Yeah, nine nine weeks and then three weeks of finals. So, so the beauty of that is every game matters. If you lose two in a row, you're in curry all of a sudden very quickly. So urgency, I've always said it, like in the NFL, 17-week season, every single game matters. Whereas the NRL, when it's 27 weeks, you can lose six in a row and then turn it around. And it matters, but it's not the end of the world sort of stuff. Whereas yeah. if you – and like we, um, I'm sure you, you can talk more about it. I'm, I'm sure there'd be teams this year as well. When you get to that SG ball season and some teams are so hyped up and then they lose their first two or three, it's panic stations because yeah. it moves so quickly. Yeah. No, there's a couple of teams that were like that. They just lost a couple that I thought would be top four or even yeah. like go through undefeated sort of thing and, um, yeah, lose a couple of games early and it's tough. And the other thing as well, just on what you said before about the entertainment factor of the game and how it's sort of 90s rugby league, a lot of these kids have something to prove as yep. well. So they're coming out and they're rushing out of line trying to put shots on or they're just trying to make an impact, trying to make a difference so that the coaches see them, so that the scouts see them. And that's another – just it's just another level sometimes. Yeah, and it's a really good point because, you know, as we know in the NRL, when you see guys that are playing for a contract, they play out of their fucking skin – all these dudes are playing for contracts. They're playing for futures in the NRL. So they are just going hard at it. Now, talk to us, mate, about the short ball. When, 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 when did you start it? Where, what was it sort of born out of? Well, I actually just started. I started like three or four years ago. You won't be able to find any of the old posts, mm -hmm. but it was um, – I was just a sports page. So I was a mad cricket, basketball, uh, NRL fan. Wasn't really going anywhere. I was just sort of <laughs> going around doing podcasts <laughs> and making posts about stuff that, you know, there were still listeners, but – 
wasn't really going anywhere. And I'm, I was always at Howard Matthews SG ball games because I had a lot of mates playing there. Yeah. And um, I started posting about it and that sort of clicked on with the families and that like the families see yep. it, start sharing it. And that's where I sort of changed my lane a little bit. And I even, I had a conversation with you. I remember, I'm not sure if you would remember it, but um, you said to me uh, that audience of all the, what, thousand people at the ground, that's, that's a target audience that you yep. can hit. And I just sort of went hard at that. And for the last two years, um, it started off just doing some players to watch Mm. um, and then it turned into full-blown just covering everything. Love that. Um, So, yeah, it's been really enjoyable the last year or two doing that. See, Kat always tells me that I just talk out of my ass, but sometimes I can come up with some absolute nuggets of gold like that. So (laughs) did you hear that one, Kat? There's one for the good guys. (laughs) <laughs> love that now that's unreal mate i i know i honestly from a selfish point of view i am stoked your page exists because and you, you'd know this that uh, most people wouldn't like if you want to try and keep up to date with all those games it is mission fucking impossible and hopefully in 10 or 15 years with technology and everything it'll change i mean it's a billion times better now than what it was 15 years ago uh yeah. but mate I, I definitely think there's a there's a niche little spot for you to do something pretty cool in rugby league there, which is unreal. Now, full games this weekend. We've got the Harold Matthews and the SG Ball. Um, obviously, you know, Harold Matthews used to be 16s. Uh, SG Ball used to be 18s during COVID. They shifted it, so now it's 17s and under 19s. Um, have you got any thoughts on that, by the way? Because I disagreed with the decision. I actually don't hate it. Yeah. Because... When it was under 16s and under 18s, they just seemed a little bit raw. Mm. But you give them that extra extra year and they everybody's developed. Whereas, like, you got 15-year-olds. Like, if you took a picture of me when I was 15, compare it to a picture of Paul Alamotti when he was 15, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. no way those two people could guard up against each other. Yep. So I think that extra year of development actually helped the quality of mm. the game. In, that's just in my opinion. My um, big worry, and you can probably talk more about it because you're on the ground there and see more of it. My bi- And look... My brother was in Harold Matt's when this happened. His season got cut short. So at the time, you know, it was in my best interest for them to do this. And I'm glad they did because Josh was going like an absolute busted that first season. They came back the next year and he did really well. So it helped him. But my big worry was that kids that are playing SG ball previously, they would have been in year 12 playing SG ball at school and all that sort of stuff. My worry was that... Playing SG Ball the year they're out of school and they're trying to get part-time jobs and all that, I thought that might have been a little bit costly and really difficult for players. Have you seen any of that? Like, do you think we've lost many players to that or anything? Or I don't know if you've lost many players to that. You might have lost, like, a couple of the fringe guys. Yep. um, Which is obviously, like, not a great thing, but a lot of those guys that you want to keep in there, the clubs are paying them enough or looking after them enough, Yeah. I I feel like. Yeah. but, you, yeah, you definitely lost a couple of fringes and that's naturally going to happen when work becomes a priority. Yeah, I, I, I think as well for those kids that are, you know, now that they're in SG Ball and they're not, they're not 17, they're 18 now, they're, they can go out on the weekends, they can get on the drink. I, I think one positive of it, you weed out the ones that are keen and the yeah. ones that aren't. Yeah. You find the guys that aren't that don't actually want it as much as other guys. Yeah. Uh, so there's positives and, and negatives too. But that's where we sit right now. Harold Matts under 17s, SG Ball under 19s. We're going to start with Harold Matts, mate. And I'm still going to so, so, sort of going to let you steer the ship a little bit here because I haven't been able to watch all that much Harold Matts this year. Uh, the SG Ball I, I've seen a bit of, but the Harold Matts, mate. We've got the Canterbury Bulldogs and the New Zealand Warriors. That one's on Saturday 11 a.m. at Henson Park. Then the next game we've got the Magpies and the Cronulla Sharks going head to head is that's on Saturday as well, right? Yeah, they're both at the exact same time at different grounds. <laughs> <sighs> Rugby league, huh? Why would we put them at two different times so people could watch both? Why wouldn't you just have them at the same fucking ground one after the other? They did it last week. Make a day out of it. it. Ridiculous. Week, yeah. Anyway, yeah. whatever. You now see what he's dealing with and why we need the page. Uh, but, mate, let's start with the doggies and the warriors. And I guess I'll open by saying... I am so happy to see the Warriors in Harold Matts. They debuted in SG Ball last year. This is their first year in Harold Matts, right? Yeah, this is their first year. When you consider this was a franchise that had a first grade team and that was it three years ago during COVID, living up there at um, Redcliffe and whatnot, um, to only four years later have a team in New South Wales Cup, Flag, SG Ball and Harold Matts, it's unbelievable. Oh, it's been an unreal effort from them. And there's such a untapped market in New Zealand yeah. for talent and we lose a lot of it to Union. Yep. And now with the introduction of Howard Matthews' flag 
um, SJ Ball last year, well, the reintroduction last year for SJ Ball. Um, it's just been unreal for their development. And yep. that's where you start to see the Jacob Le- uh, Labans and the T- Tanner Stowers Smiths and the um, Zion Myers, My- those sorts of guys come out of the woodwork now because they've really focused on rebuilding that pathway. Yeah, for sure. And even like some of the more established guys now that, you know, I remember a couple of years ago when Pedro Sullivan was there, some of the guys he fought to get over the, off the All Blacks. Rocco Berry was one of them he was very keen on. He's left now, but um, Valea, who's up at the North Queensland Cowboys, a couple of guys he fought very, very hard for. Mate, uh, obviously the big news yesterday, uh, Fisher Harris signed with the New Zealand Warriors. I put up a post about it. I got a lot of DMs last night from Warriors fans too. There, a number of them sort of included the message that over here in New Zealand, unions sort of struggling a little bit and league, because of the WARS, is absolutely fucking flying. So, mate, I would imagine it must be a hot, hot field to get into this WARS, Harold Matz and SG Ball side. Yeah, and there's some absolute guns in it. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about it once we get more in depth into this game, but... Um, yeah, their their side, even their SG ball side was quite good. They just yep. struggled to win a couple of games that they were competitive in. Um, but, yeah, their size, even their flag side, they've got some guns in. And you've talked about the New South Wales Cup side a lot on like yep. Bloke and on your own podcast and stuff like that. Like they're all good, good quality sides. So uh, really bright things for, for the New Zealand rugby league. I, I think the big advantage for them is going to be that these kids are going to get used to that flight every two weeks, travelling, yeah. getting used to that now for a couple of years before it hits first grade and it's just all too much, which I think is super exciting. Let's start with the Warriors side, mate. Um, there's obviously a couple of last names in here that I recognise. We've got an Arfoa in there. We've got a Laban in there. Uh, who, who are the standouts from this Warriors, how about that side? Well, look, I've got a couple of names here. Mm. Um, the the big one for me, like the star of this side, is the skipper, Cowan Patterson, the number nine. Uh, really crafty dummy half. He's really strong ball runner. Um, and what stands out to me and what I look for a lot for juniors is how loud they are, yep. especially when they've got that skipper role. He's the loudest voice on the field. You can hear him from the top stands. Um, and he's just a really good leader of that side. He, he navigates a really strong forward pack. Um, so I'm really keen on him. Um, one of the names that you touched on before, Laban, Desmond Laban. Mm. He's, so Jacob's younger brother. Um, he's a weapon. He played last weekend against the Eels and tore him to shreds on that left edge, yep. scored two tries. One of them was from about 20, 30 out where he just palmed the uh, back rower and then just went straight through and beat Love the that. fullback on the outside. So he's got plenty of talent. And another guy from that left edge, so Laban's left edge, his left edge centre, uh, Jeremiah Lamana, he's super strong. His yardage carries are unreal. Yeah. Um, he even had a carry on the weekend where he took it just 31 off the ruck and just went straight through two really good defenders too for Parramatta. Um, so, yeah, that left edge in particular is just a bunch of guns out there. Love that. I love that you mentioned too with the hooker, mate. I think it's so underrated in rugby league and it's the beauty of when you're at these junior grades, hearing who talks, hearing which voices you can hear. Uh, it is <laughs> like you, you hear all these rumours out of Canterbury that their biggest problem with Matt Burton is that he doesn't talk. He's a fucking superstar, but they just can't get him to talk. Um, such an undervalued asset in rugby league. Yeah, 100%. And that's what stood out to me. They got The first game that I watched them was against Para in round one. Mm. They got smacked. Mm. Um, it was 34-6 to six, and he still, every single time, energy up, got the boys lifted. And even though they did, they got smacked that day, they built from that yeah. and then they ended up firsting Parramatta who were undefeated going into last weekend and ended up just ambushing them. We're out 24 nil at half time. So I love that. And the, the, this is the other beauty of this, the, these grades of footy. Anyone can win on their day. These guys aren't 10 year professionals. They're kids that can be up and down. And if you're, if you're just up 5% on that day, like I remember it was the Harold Matts last year, the Bulldog side got absolutely slapped by Penrith. 52 to six. And then came back and beat them two weeks later. Yeah. Fucking incredible. You yeah. love to see that. I think we'll talk about some of those guys soon, just quietly. Yeah. Um, mate, anyone else from that was Harold Matt's side? Um, Afoa, you touched on him. Yep. He's had a, a couple of really Is good... Is he like a, an Afoa Afoa? Uh, Do you know? I'm, I'm not sure yep. of his relations, but um, he, he plus tell you what, he runs like him. Or he yeah. runs like Bunty. Um, really tough uh, back, back fence carries. And he has a good, good offload on him as well. He actually set up a try on the weekend um, with just a crazy offload that I just didn't see coming. And yeah. then that was actually two Patterson who cut it out, hit Laban, and Laban went straight through the score. So, 
those main guys, they get involved a lot. Um, I, I'll really rate a couple of those guys. Mate, take us to the Canterbury Bulldogs side, and this is where for you Canterbury fans, oh, I mean, like, you're coming 15th and lighter in NRL, but you can see improvement week in, week out. The big positive for Canterbury is that they have got so many stars coming through their grades. I probably think they're in a better spot than most sides at the moment. Yeah, would you say stay patient? These guys stay patient, through. definitely. <laughs> yes. Did you see um, we, we got a Bulldogs jersey sent out to us by Canterbury? Uh, I, 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 I didn't mention this to you, Kat. Our card said... This jersey could be anything on Kempi's one. It said, stay patient, Bulldog, Doggies fans. <laughs> Love that. So shout out to yeah. the Canterbury team. They are doing very, very good things. Uh, mate, take me to this uh, Canterbury side who uh, obviously had a very successful Harold Matt season last year. They've backed it up with another one. And I've just noticed before we move on, how good is it seeing a Canterbury Bulldogs player with the first name Braith? Fuck, that takes <laughs> me back. How good yeah. is that? And he's a good quality player too. He's a centre, left centre for him. Um, him and Paul Johnson on that edge have been yep. unbelievable. Um, and inside of him, Matthew Barakat, he's the main one that I want to talk about uh, today. Halfback, he sort of reminds me a little bit of Mitchie Moses uh, mm. with his running game and he's got a really solid kicking game as well, particularly his short kicking game. Um He's one of those guys that just creates points. Um, he he creates plenty of overlaps and the defenders bait on him as well because of how strong his running game is. So that creates opportunities for Braith and for uh, Paul Johnson on that edge. So a lot of their points have come through him um, and they've been one of the best attacking sides in the comp. Like they're plus 180 and undefeated this year. So yeah, right that's, that's an average uh, margin of victory of about 20 points. I'll be honest, I saw his name and I thought it was Baccarat like the game that absolutely fisted me at the casino on Saturday night. Uh, but I think this is the – and we'll talk about another seven at Canterbury in the SG ball. But, mate, they've got so many halves there. Oh, in yeah. a very good spot. Coming through the ranks. Like even in uh, Cup and Flag, you guys like Joseph O'Neill, Cassius Tia. Um, yeah. Cassius leaving the Roosters, that, that surprised me a little shocked bit. shocked me too. I didn't even know it happened until yeah, I did one, I, yeah. week one team list and I'll see Cassius there. I'm like – yeah, I, I've watched a lot of Cass because him and my brother are in the same team. And, um, yeah, I thought the Roosters absolutely loved Cass and then to see him pop up at Canterbury was uh, very interesting. Well, look, if Gus has anything to say about a, <laughs> about a player, they're probably coming, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, and we, we've obviously had the injury to the uh, – his name is completely escaping me, uh, the kid that came down from Queensland. He played uh, for Toya? Who? Toya? No, uh, no, no, Toya? So, sorry, no. The kid that came down from Queensland to play for Canterbury last year, he played first grade. Um, oh, um, he's, he's got the neck injury. I can see his face. This oh, is going to uh, shit me. Uh, Carl Oluwapu. Carl Oluwapu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, In what sounds house. like his career um, could be Red Rover, unfortunately. So they've got very unlucky there because they had a star in him. Uh, yeah. But now with a few other guys coming through, very exciting. Who else stands out from this doggy is Matt Side. Uh, Mason Phillips. Yep. Uh, he played last year. <laughs> I think he must have gotten an injury about halfway through the year. Um, or maybe he was just out of favour. Not sure. Yeah. Uh, but about round six, he didn't play for the rest of the year. That was obviously their grand final winning campaign. But through the first five rounds, from what I saw of him, he was super. And now he's come out this year and he's been one of their best players. Um, reminds me of Blake Moser. Uh, okay. He's, like, he's a bit tall for a hooker, but he's very elusive. He's not the quickest. Um but, yeah, he creates plenty of gaps uh, just, just by deceiving the markers or deceiving the A defender. Could definitely be worse people to be compared to just quietly like that. All right, let's move to – you right to move on to the next one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's move on to the other uh, Harold Matt semi-final. We got the Magpies taking on the Sharkies. Uh, so for those of you that aren't familiar with this competition, Magpies obviously align with the West Tigers. Uh, so a lot of those guys sort of follow through that system there. Sharkies obviously under the Sharkies there. Uh, mate, the number one thing that stood out to me here and uh, one of the great rugby league names of all time, centre for the Magpies, Glassy Glassy. <laughs> Fuck, I hope he makes it. Oh, yeah. It'd be Even a great if he's not good enough, game. I want him in. <laughs> yeah, Unreal. just bring him, bring him straight through. Um, yeah, no, it's one of the great rugby league names. It's unbelievable. I, I seen it week one. And I, yeah, it was unreal. Great gear. Who stands uh, out from that Magpie side, mate? Uh, well, for me, there's a guy, um, the centre, he and Massey Maccasini. Mm. He, super exciting player. Reminds me of when Paul Alamotti was coming through the grades. Um, really strong, mobile. He just bullies the opposite centre almost. Like <laughs> I'd, I'd hate to be marking up against him. I'm yeah. three years older than him and I wouldn't want to mark up against him. And uh, for those of you that haven't watched these grades over the years that are going, oh, okay, Paul Mol Holomotti, who cares? He was like a fucking immortal of how Matt's an SG ball. He just dominated. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, a, he's an absolute nightmare for his opposing centre. I went to a game um, against Tigers 
so it was Magpies versus Tigers, so the West Tigers battle. Yeah. Um, and the opposing so he gave the opposing center a bath. He um he scored a try about. 15 metres out, just palmed uh, one, palmed his opposing centre. The winger come in, he just sticks a left hand out, palms <laughs> him, and then the fullback come across and he just palmed him and, and Trance uh, went straight over the line. So Love that. And uh, when we actually sat down to have lunch earlier today, a little sneak behind that curtain, he was pretty much the first guy you mentioned. Yeah, he's super. He went on a four or five game period there where – he scored 20-plus points in each game. He's a goal kicker, so obviously that's... Still. But yeah. still, like that's one to two tries each game and then slotting slotting all the conversions. From Very her. nice. Who else in this side, mate? Any, any forwards or anything that stand out to you? Um, forwards, Christian Tapu Moors. Um, he's he's just another really big body forward. Those sorts of guys tend to stand out in this yep. competition, but he looks like he's got a solid enough work rate um, to sort of progress a little bit more. Um, and he's a try scorer too. Like he gets close to the line, he's hard to stop. It's really, it's really interesting when you get to watch like some some of these big body front row forwards at this age. You're actually like, yeah, you you can see how dominant they are, but you, you're looking for the little extra things that tell you when everyone else catches up, are yeah. they still going to be above? Yeah, like sort of stuff like, oh, when the when the dummy half goes, is he staying tight at A, yeah. or is he um, is he is he working from marker when he does make the tackle, or? Um, is he taking that extra carry if the boys are on the back fence, sort of stuff like that? So he, uh, he does those, he checks those boxes for and me. And there's a couple of guys in the SG ball who you could watch from the Harold Mats that you knew were the real deal. They yeah. weren't just the biggest guys in the field. Yeah. Love that, mate. Anyone else at the uh, pies? Uh, Ashton Large. Uh, yep. He's actually playing an age up, uh, but you'll see more of him. He'll play City under 16s, I think. Um, so you'll watch him there as well. He's just a superstar. He looks. Every bit of footballer from dummy half, really uh, crafty running game. Um, and he's powerful too for a hooker. Yeah. Sort of like a Brandon Smith yeah, um, okay. where he can just sort of barge over people when he scoots. But um, I, I really like the look of him from what I've seen. And just another one that I wanted to mention as well, I have mentioned him on my page before, Ali Hitcham Karnib. He played last year on the Sting. And then I got told that he was moving to fullback. I'm like, I love that. And he's just Perfect. His execution in a three-on-two situation, perfect every time. Whether he needs to run or whether he needs to cut out or whether he needs to hit short, he seems to nail it each time he gets that chance. Isn't it such an underappreciated skill just being able to nail a three-on-two? Like everyone thinks it's so simple, everyone can do it. Not many guys can do it consistently. Darius Boyd made a living off it. The king, the absolute king of it, Darius. Before him, Carmichael, some of the greats. Yeah. Uh, mate, let's move to the Sharkies. And uh, as I said, I haven't watched too much of the Harold Mats this year, but the one name I just keep hearing is this Oliver Lester, the fullback. Talk to me. So the Sharkies this year have made three double-digit comebacks. Uh, one was 12-0 against the Raiders, one was 18-0 against the Roosters, and then they versed the Roosters the very next week in an elimination final, went to Oranges down 22-4, wow. and they've ended up winning 30-22. to, 20, uh, 30 to 22. Wow. The guy behind it, well, the two guys behind it, but I'll talk about your man first, Oliver Lester. Um, he's just a freak footballer. Like, he'll, he'll just chip in and just do something special. They'll score points, and then they'll get a roll. Like, he just yeah. builds a momentum from that. Um, on the weekend in that comeback against the Roosters in a semi-final, which is like crazy, um, he scored a try out the back of shape and he carried four defenders over the line. And I just thought, was that a front row or was that a fullback? And then the very next set or maybe three minutes later, um, he gets a ball that lands at his feet, has no right to get to it whatsoever. It was an absolute stinker of a pass. um, And he just kicks it through off the toe punches through the line, regathers it. The fullback uh, comes across in cover defence and he just goes flick out the back. The winger scores and that's what started the comeback. So he's, that. Yeah, he's just a freak footballer. Um, he was the main catalyst for that comeback on the weekend. And then the Who, other, who's the, before you move off him, who's like a, a player comp in the NRL for a fullback? I don't have a current player comp off the top of my head, but I do have a bit of Nathan Gardner about him. Ooh, love that. Yeah, so uh, I remember when uh, Nathan's coming through, um, looks very similar, very quick. He's a bit uh, on the skinnier side, yeah. but um, quick and elusive and just sneaky strong. Mate, I was at the SFS one night sitting up in the members and he scored one of the greatest tries I have ever fucking seen where he just he, he put the roosters on absolute ice skates. Yeah. Went from one sideline to the other. Poor 
Braith and Astor was, was in within about four metres of him the entire way and he might as well have been fucking three suburbs away. He never stood a chance, the poor yeah, bastard. Yeah, that's the sort of freaky stuff that Oliver Lester can come up with. So. Love that, love that. Jeez, I haven't heard the name Nathan Gardner in a while. That's great. <laughs> uh, mate, you mentioned there was him and one other. Who's the other guy? Uh, Thomas Dello, the skipper. Mm. Um, when they were down, so they were down 18 nil at one point and I just he- heard them and I was a little bit disappointed by this from a sh- like if I'm looking from a shark's perspective none of the trainers were speaking or there was no blue shirt out there telling them okay what can we do the person that was saying everything was was Thomas Dello he was mm. in the middle of the crowd he was jeeing the boys up he was um he and he knows the boys know now doesn't matter how far behind they are they can still come back because they've done yeah. it a couple couple times this year I think he mentioned that in the huddle I think I overheard that and then he comes out and lock forward, grub a kick in behind the line for himself, dives on it to score. That was the first try of the comeback. And then he ended up scoring the uh, lead taking try, just a crash play, nothing special, but still you've got to yep. get there. And then he made a line break from about 30 out where he just stepped the hooker, um, went about 60 metres, got caught about 10 out, and then they scored off the back of it, iced the game. So oh, good, freak footballer. Love that. And I haven't seen him play, but, geez, there's something special about a shark. He's number nine with Ennis on the back. <laughs> I, 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 I'm pretty sure mixed kids – it wouldn't be mixed kids. They, they'd be too young for this, his I, kids. But I think it is his kid. I think really? I, yeah, somebody said it to me the other day. I'm not 100% certain, but I was there on the weekend and they go, yeah, that's McEnnis' kid. I coached an under-12s rep team when I was teaching and McEnnis' kid was in it. I think his name was Randy Ennis, I think it was. Yeah. I'm trying to think what you, oh, fuck, I guess that would have been four years ago. That was before I was full-time doing this. So, yeah, maybe they are around that age. You might be right, actually. Yeah, yeah. Love that. How good. Another Ennis. Fuck, I imagine he'd be a nightmare to deal with. Uh, mate, anyone else in that side? Um, a guy that I think um, deserves a rap because he's a bench forward, so you don't really see many people talk about him, but Cruz Parkin. He come on on the weekend. He comes on when I think it was 12 nil. Yeah. His first carry, he just bent the line back, went about 15 metres, dragged a couple of people with him. And then I just I, I watched that and I just kept watching him throughout the game. Every single run was with the exact same intensity. It's sort of like how um, you watch Val Holmes. I don't know different positions, but when yep. Val Holmes comes off the back fence, he just rips in. Yeah. Um, that's sort of what it looked like. Um, and then he had a carry off the kickoff. Uh, where he just bounced through a couple of players and then split them and went about 40 metres. Yeah. Uh, and then they, I think they rolled off the back of that and ended up scoring at the end of that set. So um, I'm really impressed with what I've seen. I haven't seen a whole lot of him, to be fair, but that sample size has really impressed me. Yeah, with a name like Cruz, you'd want to be able to play rugby league. Oh, yeah, the parents Certainly knew. deliver. All right, mate, let's move to SG Balls. This is under-19s, and uh, I'm really excited to have this chat for you because there is, especially in this Roosters-Bulldogs game, there's a lot of guys that I've watched Quite a bit of footy of that I'm very excited about a few of I, them. I knew you'd be interested in the Roosters game. Yeah. <laughs> easy, easy. <laughs> I don't need you on my back too. Um, let's let's kick off with the Roosters, mate. And, um, mate, there's a couple of forwards that, that, that we'll touch on. We'll get to them because I think there is two, at least two first graders to come out of this pack in my opinion. Let's start with the backs though, mate. A kid that I've always absolutely loved is Cooper Toy. Um, he re- Coop reminds me of... He's like the third Morris brother. That's what yeah. he reminds me of. Yeah, that's a great comparison, actually. I was actually trying to think of a play comparison when you started to talk about him. Um, that's a great one, though. Um, yeah, very. He, he's not tall. He's not. A, he's a weird body shape. Yeah, yeah, he's not an amazingly athletically looking guy, but he, he's deceptively strong and he's actually quite quick as yeah. well. Um, he, yeah, he's been good this year. I've been impressed with what I've seen. Yeah, Coop. He uh, he was. I think my brother was playing center in SG ball. Maybe it was even Harold Matz. It, it, it might have been my brother's Harold Matz year and um, Cooper was young and he, he was outside him on the wing and, fuck, he had a good season. Just a tough yeah. kid. Mate, Zach Safadi, I've watched him play a lot of club footy from, like, l- local footy out here. Really big body. He's always, he's always just run the ball hard. He, he, he's still going good, Safadi? Yeah, I've I seen him for the first time and I thought, how is this bloke a fullback? He's got the biggest legs you'll yeah. ever see in your life. Um, yeah, but he's, like... Um, he, he, the, the legs move quick. I tell you that. Um, he's been good this year. Uh, his back, his carries uh, off kick returns, uh, my main trait for him uh, this year. Um, but yeah, he's been quite good, mate. Uh, and, uh, and a guy that I haven't seen too much of, but I just keep hearing the name Enzo. 
Yeah, Enzo Griffey. I think he come from New Zealand. New Zealand, um, yeah. So this is his first year over here. Um, he's yeah, that centre pairing has been deadly. They've scored most of their points or set up most of their points. So it's interesting. I always thought Cooper would end up as a fullback, but I think I think Zach Safardi is probably just most suited to playing fullback. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think Cooper's going to be one to watch over the next few years. Um, made the halfback. Um, I believe it was a couple of weeks ago. Kicked a match winning field goal over at Leichhardt. Yeah, so Toby Rodwell, that was round two. Yeah. That was a game that they shouldn't like. They shouldn't have won that. They coming into it, you would have thought they put fifty on them, but Balmain just ambushed them. Yeah, he kept them calm that whole game. He just kept kicking the corners, kept them in the fight. Um, I, I love his kicking game, and then obviously he ended up winning the scoring the match winning field goal. So um, he's a, a player I'm really impressed with. I've seen a fair bit of him um, over the last couple of years. Yeah, it's just his game managing and his kicking unreal. I think he's probably one of the better ones in the comp uh, for that. And he's a guy that you definitely need to watch coming through the grades. Yeah, love that. Now in this forward pack, for me, mate, I think there are two guys that will play first grade in the next few years. First one is the front row forward, Va. Fuck. <laughs> Man, he's a big bit of gear. Oh, yeah, 100%. And this front row uh, matchup between Va and Fanafo Seve yep. is just going to be absolute fireworks. Two big bodies who are going to go at each other. Neither of them back down from any sort of contest. Um, so that'll be absolute fireworks if anybody gets to watch that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Va, I've I've been a big fan of him for the last couple of years. He come down from Queensland, mm. I believe, with uh, older brother Xavier. Um, yeah, he, he's, he's boxing or something now, isn't he? Or is he? I'm not sure what he's doing. I yeah, just haven't okay. heard the name for a yeah. little bit. So, um, yeah, but he's he's a gunner, just real big body forward. Um, who gets he, – he does have a pretty good work rate now. He, he used to come off the bench and just be impact. Um, but now he's – yeah, he's got a really good work rate now and he's just a leader for this forward pack. Yeah. Sets a tone. Love that. Now, mate, I think the kid that I like most out of this entire group is Jersey 13, Blake Steep. I am hyper confident he plays first grade. I was, um, I was over in Vegas and I was on the red carpet just asking players and coaches who's the CBA from your club – and all the Roosters boys sort of said Wong, but then they went, but you already know about him. The one to watch is Blake Steep. Three out of three said Blake Steep. So um, a very, very talented kid. Tough as nails. Oh, yeah. He's a proper workhorse. Um, and he'd, he'd, put your, he'd put his head where you wouldn't put your feet. Um, yeah, he's a star. I reckon he's, a, I reckon he's probably the, um, the, the best out of this crop um, of – uh, Roosters boys, he's the one that I'm. I'm like you. I'm so confident he plays first grade. I'm confident he plays cut by the end of this year. So he's yeah. a he's a name that's going to come into first grade equations quickly. Um, and that's another thing that I wanted to talk about too. This SG ball age group, Lockie Galvin, Blaze Talungi, um, a couple of those guys, they're still eligible for this. So that sort of shows you how um, how far away these guys are. Like it's not. It's not out of the realm of possibility that you see some of these guys debut by the end of the year. Well, as we said, because they moved SG Ball to 19 instead of 18s, they are a lot closer than they ever have been. Yeah. Mate, Blake Steep is one that – he's one of those guys – it wouldn't shock me if we get to the end of the year and the Roosters have a game if they're locked in the top four, for example, and they rest players. He's a kid I could see getting a sniff on a bench. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I, I, I reckon he plays – less than eight or ten games in flag. I reckon he'll go straight to cup very quickly. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Anyone else on this Rooster side, mate? I sort of hijacked that one because they're, they're the kids I've seen the most yeah. of. Um, no, nah, so a guy that I like, Jackson Allen off the bench, uh, hooker. I've seen yep. a fair bit of him. I, I like him uh, as an impact hooker. I don't know sort of what his future looks like, but I like him in this grade. He's been really good when he's come on. Um, and then another guy, Ethan Roberts, we were talking yeah. about him before. Um, he's really just – he looks like an athlete. Yeah. Um, so he's got a lot of potential. I'd like to see him clean up a couple a little silly errors and stuff that he sometimes makes. But when he's on, he's on. And he's tough to can't handle. Yeah. He's worked – yeah, Ethan Roberts is another guy. So Ethan Roberts and Zach Safadi, they were both playing for uh, the Paddo Colts in the local um, comp over this way, the, the nuts and bolts. Um, and, yeah, Ethan Roberts is a guy that he, he's really improved over the last few years and very, very good player. Um, mate, the hooker, Zach Gillett, um, they have got – the Roosters – mate, they've got an absolute plethora of fantastic hookers in their system. Yeah. And I'd heard the same about Jackson Allen that he's very good. 
What's your read on Zach Gillette? Because, like, my impression was that Allen was a very good nine. So to be keeping him out, he must be handy. If you're good enough to hold Jackson Allen on the bench, yeah. you, you're a freak. You're good. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like uh, Gillette. I like a lot of their hookers, though. So I, when you're looking at these SG ball hookers, you don't know where they're going to go because you've got Tyler Moriarty, Benaya Iolu yeah. um, ahead of them. So it's it's fucking tough for, tough for hookers at Roosters at the moment. And, I mean, that. that's, you know, you've also got Brandon Smith, you've got Connor Watson, you've got you know, Sandon Smith can play there as well. Uh, the, yeah. the guy that he just mentioned... Um, but Naya, he was the one that was named on the extended bench for the Roosters this week. I watched a lot of him. He's a very good player too. So, uh, yeah. yeah, they're in a very good spot, the Roosters, when you consider they let go of Sam Verrills not that long ago too. Plenty of nines. Mate, let's go to Canterbury. And uh, I want to start with the headline act. Canterbury, uh, you know, they've got Hacho, they've got Toby Sexton. But I know from talking to people at Canterbury, Mitch Woods, in their mind, is the future. Uh, he's an extremely talented halfback who I just – Love watching him do his things. You would have seen a lot more of him than me. Talk to us. Yeah, there was a um, big contract war between uh, Gus Gould and the AFL, the Sydney mm. Swans, to keep him. Yep. I think he was the top-rated prospect for the <laughs> Sydney Swans. Um, so that was huge. And the fact that we got to keep him is good for the game Yeah, because I think he'll be a star. Um, every single game that he's played this year, um, at least that I've watched, obviously can't watch them all. Yeah. Um, which I hope at some stage New South Wales Rugby League allows that. Um, but he's his kicking game, his running game, unbelievable. Um, he's the star of this comp. I wouldn't be surprised if he takes out player of the competition for this yeah. year. Um, he's definitely the guy that Bulldogs have sort of penciled in as their long-term uh, seven. Obviously, if he develops, there's a lot of things that can go wrong between the ages of 18 and 21 yeah. that can stop your development. But, yeah, he's got – Unreal potential. Yeah, huge potential. He's another one I wouldn't be surprised to see him in cup at some yeah. point this year. Yeah, well, there's, there. there's not exactly a um, a gold mine of halfbacks at, at yep. Bulldogs at the moment. So, yeah. Well, you, I mean, outside of Sexton, who, you know, whatever, you could argue that he is probably the best or the most genuine seven at the club. Yeah. Well, they got they got Beyond Diodo currently playing in the halves in New South Wales Cup. I know he is a half, like by trade, but I think he's a better hooker anyway. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah. 100%. Yeah. Uh, mate, who else stands out in this side? Um, just read numbers six to nine because that's what I'm going to cover. Yeah. Um, Alex Conti, he's been a little bit overshadowed by the fact that he's been Mitchell Woods' halves partner. I've still heard his name quite a bit. When, yeah. he, when he was coming through the Tigers, yeah. he was just superstar, going to be the next big thing. I don't think he's taken a step back at all this year, but yeah. people don't talk about him as much. Um, it's I've, not a bad spot to be though. Oh, if all the attention can be on Woods and you can just make yeah. your way through. Yeah, he. I think he's a really good player. He is small. I, I will say that he is a smaller player, but he's just a, a natural sort of. He'll create opportunities for you in that house position. He'll put on points and he'll score them himself. So I rate him a lot. Um, I touched on him before. Fanafo Seve. Uh, really, he's he's just uh, he's just got mongrel in him. Like he's just a real aggressive front rower who just sets the tone. He'll go after. He'll pick out the biggest guy on the field and just go at him all yeah. day. Um, even though he probably half the time he probably is the biggest guy on the field. Gun to head, Seve Va. Who would you rather have heading into the future? Seve. Really? Wow, okay. He's oh, already I haven't seen to too much of him, but I've seen a lot of Vaa and he's a fucking good player. He's so Seve's already signed to top thirty for twenty twenty five. Um so I think he's and in a side that doesn't have a I've just been bagging Bulldogs for the last yeah. last they've got five no minutes, middles. They're begging they've got for, no middles. Yeah. So he's a guy that you could see come into first grade equations very soon. Yeah, okay. I like that. And did you say the nine? Mitchell yeah, Rogers? Yeah, Mitchell Rogers. He come down from Queensland. I, was, yep. I don't watch a whole lot of Queensland stuff. I try to because I want to be covering all bases as soon as I can. But um, from what I've seen when he was up there, he was a gun. Yep. And then he come down here and he was off the bench uh, behind Zaytus Moaga Tutia. Yep. <laughs> Sorry for the pronunciation there. But... Um, he was just killing it and then he's eventually forced his way into the starting spot. Um, I don't know where Zaytis has gone at the moment, but, yeah, he's he's will play the whole game now. But he killed it on the weekend. He's been killing it all year. Um, he, he's a gun. I like him. Mate, without knowing as much context as you about the other games, I would assume, is this game of the week? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'd say this is the one that you need to watch because Roosters have been undefeated all year. They've been the best, best side um, – Evidently, and the Bulldogs, 
we were talking about this before. You lose two games, you're borderline out of it. Yeah. The Bulldogs started the year one win, one draw, two losses. Yeah, wow. And I just thought there's no way a side that good that I had as one of my top four sides. I was like, there's no way a side that good's going to miss finals. And lo and behold, they win five games straight by about 40 and Love ended up that. ended up uh, getting into fourth. And, yeah, now, now they're – I reckon they're a shot at causing a bit of an upset here. Upset by way of knocking off an undefeated side. Yeah. The Roosters are undefeated, are they? Yeah, yeah. they were going good. I didn't realise they were undefeated. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Bit of pressure. <laughs> Fuck, a lot of pressure on young heads there. Yeah. All right, mate, let's move to the final game. And by the way, guys, that Roosters-Canterbury game, uh, that one's 12.30 p.m. at Henson Park. So obviously uh, that's where the dogs run and whatnot. Oh, no, it's not. I was thinking Wentworth. Ignore that. Henson Park's still a great oval worth getting out to. <laughs> yeah. Old home of the Newtown Jets. I went to... Uh, I went to Wentworth Park about three weeks ago to watch my brother play and fuck, it was a good day out. Oh, yeah. Playing for the Glee Dirty Reds. Got absolutely slapped around, but it was a good day. Um, let's move to the last SG ball game, mate. Uh, we've got the Dragons uh, taking on the Knights. So for context for you guys that don't follow this comp too closely, uh, in this comp you've got the St. George of the White Dragons and you've got the Steelers yep. in this comp. Um, so this Dragon side, they've impressed a lot of people this year, haven't they? Yeah, they've really impressed me. They've got a superstar forward pack, three Australian schoolboys in it, yep. which I thought, yeah, okay, cool. They have a forward pack that will go with the best of them and I thought that would drag them into the finals equation. I didn't realise how many points they had in them. Yeah, okay. Um, guys like Shadi Hamoud and uh, Jesse Williams, David Afu, who they signed from Penrith, mm. um, they've been super this year, created plenty of opportunities. So, oh, yeah, they've they've come out. Mate, the one from what I've seen of this comp, I think the best player in this dragon side is the lock forward, Latu. How do yeah. you feel about him? Yeah, I think he's a gun. Um, he was an Australian schoolboy, one of those guys I mentioned. Um, he's playing an age up and he's been is super he young? this year. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. That's scary. Yeah. Um, he's really powerful ball runner, um, but he's also got a bit of ball playing in him. The first game that they played this year was against Penrith. Um and they were down 24-16, I think with 10 minutes to go or something like that. Yeah. Um, they go right. Uh, Zach Nasher scores an unbelievable try. It was like Roger Tuovasha, Sheck-esque, yeah. where he he, uh, he steps the winger one-on-one, dives in the corner. Love that. And then about five minutes later, 30 seconds left on the clock, Finau takes the ball to the line, drags in uh, the defender. I can't remember who it was. I think it was Jet Cleary. No, dragged I saw him this. In, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dragged him in and then just pops a short ball to... Um, Hamoud, who was running around the outside and went straight through to score the game winner. So An absolute seed, that ball. Yeah, that was yeah. – I can't believe he's a year young. That's wild. Yeah. Uh, mate, you mentioned him before, but Jesse Williams, I'm hearing this name plenty. Yeah, he was a guy I didn't know too much about coming into this year, but um, he's been super. He's been – I think he was one of the leading try scorers. I haven't actually looked into um, the actual stats, try scoring stats, but I think he was up there um, with the top best of them. Um, very quick. He's yep. taken a couple of length of the field tries um, and just really tall too. Um, so he's, he's hard to stop close to the line, give him an inch of space, he'll score. Love so. that. Mate, anyone else in this dragon side you want to touch on? Um, I just want to talk about the other um, schoolboys that I was talking about before. Yep. Uh, Loco Tonga, one of the great names, if you read out his uh, full name here on the page. And then uh, Jacob Alengahu. Uh, Loco is just a really big body dominates as as per expected but um he looks like he's made of the right stuff as well like what i was talking about with uh christian tapu moors yeah um before so he's super dominant in this comp um and jacob allen who he's um a workhorse in back row mm. um and runs a really tough line like he's he's not afraid to get hurt or to hurt others which i really like yeah um and he's actually good under the high ball too so they put up a couple of kicks to him this year where he's He's gotten up above him, even though he's not that tall. Yeah. Um, but he's he's gotten up above him, got right in the contest. He just loves the contact. I'll tell you what, there's something about in these junior grades, like like at this level, like you just mentioned, um, the front row forward. I always reckon when you when you go and watch these games, the boys in the all white jerseys, they look even bigger in yeah. this grade. So I imagine that kid must be Enormous, mate. Let's move to the Newcastle Knights. Um, I think the Knights have done a really good job over the last few years with their junior development. Obviously, Peter Parr's arrived up there and he's done a number of very fantastic things. And you know, they've obviously got you know, Kalen Ponga, they've got Fletcher Sharp coming through, and this fullback they've got, he looks fucking special to me. Yeah, I said this about a year and a half ago. I think he's the best of the bunch. Not the best compared to like Ponga. Ponga's proven. But in terms of like your Fletcher Sharps, David Armstrongs. I get what you're saying. I yeah. think he's the best of them. 
he's just <laughs> you made up a good comparison. I think it was um, he's Kalen Ponga in the body of Tom Dravojevic. Yeah, he reminds me of Latrell Mitchell, mm. but with a higher work rate. Like he's always punching up through the middle in support play. He's always taking carries, and he's just he just glides across the field. Like he's yeah, it's it's awesome to watch. Really, he, he glides, but then when he comes into contact, he's just a fucking bulldozer. Like oh, yeah. you, you know, like you see Turbo, just when when there's nothing on for me, he just goes, J -j -j just give me the ball and I'll fucking score. Yeah, he, he does, that's I see so much of Turbo and KP in this guy. Latrell's a good shout, especially when Latrell was a little bit younger. Yeah. way that he moved and whatnot when he came into first grade. I think it's a very good shout. And, yeah, they've got Armstrong, Sharp, and this kid. Um, <laughs> fucking great spot to be. Oh, yeah. Everyone's seen this highlight by now, or at least most of you have, because it went absolutely nuts. It was um, – so Wilson DeCourcy is another one I'll talk about later. Absolutely folded the manly fullback. Connor picks it up, <laughs> and I think this was so underrated about this play. Connor picks it up. The winger comes across to try and make a, a tackle – and he just sticks his arm out, just nah, did not move like at all. Like he didn't move off his line or anything. He just kept going straight and just went nah, sat down the winger and, and ended up scoring. It was unbelievable. And he does that sort of stuff all the time. Uh, last year against Man against Manly as well, back rower coming across to make a cover tackle. Yeah. Huge back rower. Not like a not like a little workhorse, like back rower just gets through his tackle. Like a big damaging back rower comes across. I'm thinking Fuck, he's going to get cleaned up here. Sticks his arm out, does not move. Like, <laughs> it's unbelievable. Mate, he looks like a guy to me that if, if you had him in the gym doing body weights and bars and stuff, he'd be, he'd be fu his upper body strength just looks crazy. Yeah. And he's just like balanced too. Like, it's so, you, you watch it and you think, oh, yeah, you just palmed him off. To yeah. stay balanced when you palm someone off coming at you at full speed, that's un like unbelievable. My, my worry with Armstrong is that he might be a little bit too um, skinny. I worry with Fletcher whether he's going to grow. This kid, just by looking at him, he just looks like he's still got a body to grow into, which is terrifying. Yeah. yeah. And he's got ball playing on top of that. Like yeah. his, his ball playing has improved out of sight this year. Um, he out the back of shape. It's him, uh, Hami Loza, Logan Owaki, who's another schoolboy, and Sasai Latu absolutely caused havoc to the Steelers last week. And that's another thing that I wanted to say. Knights attempting to do the Dragons double and beat both of their feeder teams in back-to-back -back weeks. Love that. <laughs> Love that. Mate, uh, I haven't seen him play, but my God, is there a more Newcastle front rower name than Bo Slade? <sighs> yeah. It just sounds like he's and not he's, to be fucked with. Oh, yeah, and he reminds me of a couple of Knights forwards Love too. That. Like he's he, he has been coming off the bench. They've got a kid there by the name of Cody Hopwood. He yep. had quite a nasty uh, head knock last week. He's a gun though, um, but yeah, he's going to miss the rest of the finals, which is a huge out for them. Um, but yeah, he's he's going to get his chance both slate, and he's been killer for the Howard Matt side last year and now this year. The other name that I've heard a little bit here is um, Jack Hillier, the lock forward. Yeah, double last week. Double last week. Well, yeah. That's probably I've heard his name, yeah, because I remember the lock forward they had last year, I absolutely fucking loved, and I think he's gone into the flag, and I think he's trained with first grade. He came yeah, from Miles. Parramatta. Miles yeah. Martin, that's it. Yeah, yeah, very good player there. Uh, mate, anyone else to touch on from this side? Um, Wilson DeCourcy, I'll just finish what I was saying about him before. Um, he They signed him from Penrith. Um, I heard shouts that they had penciled him in as a long-term replacement to Gagai. Mm. Um and, look, I was a little bit doubtful of that when I first heard that, but he's, yeah, come out and prove, proved the tag a little bit yep. this year. He was an Australian He was an Australian schoolboy as well, so this centre pairing with both Oz schoolboys. Wow. Um, and, he's yeah, he's been lethal this year. He, he caught a cold last week, though, out on the right edge because they just kept going left. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah. What, what, what about the halves in this side? Anyone sort of standing out from the Newcastle side there? Uh, both of the halves good. Fletcher Hunt, I think he's a bush boy. Yep. Um, I had not heard a single thing about him until Jai Lanane went down with an ACL injury. Yep. And Jai Lanane's a freak. And they had to replace him. I thought, this this can't be good for yep. Newcastle. He come in first week that he played, he scored a hat-trick. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, right. He's just he's just a tough he, – he, it wouldn't surprise me if he is a bush boy because he's just a tough footballer. I've got a good yep. kicking game um, and just a flowing mullet as well just to top it all off. Of course he does. <laughs> 
Jeez, they can produce from Newcastle. How bloody good. So that go, that, that game, guys, will be 6.30 p.m. at Leichhardt Oval on Saturday. Uh, and the other SG ball game, as we said. So you can do the day, daily double there. 12.30 p.m. at Henson Park for the Doggies and the Chooks. And then you can catch the Dragons of the night, 6.30 p.m. on Saturday. Uh, mate, what's your grand final predictions? Who's going to be in the Mats and the SG ball grand final? And who wins it? Let's start with Mats. What do you reckon? Oh, I can't go past the two undefeated sides in Bulldogs and Magpies. Yeah. Um, their only blemish on their records, they both drew to Parramatta and Parramatta were undefeated as well. So those top three sides. Wow. Yeah, those top three sides. That's rare. All undefeated, yeah. And they all drew with each other. So it was just un- <laughs> unbelievable. But then Warriors come out last week and beat Parramatta. So anything can happen. So, But I'm just going to have to go Bulldogs and Magpies. I think they're the two standout sides. Can I ask you too, mate, and for people playing at home, uh, these competitions, they only go for 10 weeks. You don't actually play everyone throughout the season. Are there any teams playing each other for the first time uh, So both of the Howard Matthews matchups are first-time matchups. Really? Yeah. Um, and then I think both the SG Ball matchups, they've versed each other already. So Yeah, right. That's interesting for the Harold Marts. Yeah. Unreal. Okay, SG Ball grand final. What are you doing? Uh, I'm going to go Bulldogs to get the upset over the Roosters. Oh. Uh, I know that hurts you, uh, but... I'm going to have to stick with the Bulldogs there. Yep. And I'm going to go the Knights to knock off the Dragons. Would that be an upset or not? Oh, Knights beat them when they matched up. Okay. So Dragons actually got out to a 14 nil lead and the Knights brought it back and ended up winning late. And it was just a bunch of – it was a crazy finish. The ball hit the ground at one point and they kicked it through like it was soccer and then um, – or football. <laughs> and then um, – Yeah, careful. Yeah. yeah you should jump out of the table. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was a crazy finish. So I expect that to be a really good game. But I just think Knights are stronger on paper and I think they've looked a bit better, a bit more clinical. So I'll tell you what, if the Roosters lose this one, God, it's a case of the ones that got away over the last few years. Oh, yeah, SG especially ball. that Panthers grand final a couple of years Fuck. ago. They were up, what, 22 <laughs> nil, and ended up losing. Now, uh, the other name that we never actually mentioned in the Roosters side, and you know, he's, he's, he's probably got more attention than the average player, was um, Freddie Jung bloke, uh, Zach Fittler, who... Um, yeah. Mate, he started the season. The, all the games that I've watched this year, the rest of you, he's come off the bench. Um, they're just so strong and they've got so much depth that he's not making the side. Yeah, well, that just shows the quality of their forward pack, the fact that Zach Phil is not making it. He's also very young to keep in mind. So Yeah, um, yeah he's, he's a year young, so he'll 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 have time. Oh, I think he's a good quality player. I yeah, like him. Yeah, so do I. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he's in the, a leadership position of this side next year. Yeah. Mate. How bloody good. I cannot wait to catch up on these all over the weekend. Going to be a busy week of NRL, but I'll be glued to the short ball to catch up on it all. Make sure you go and follow on Instagram, the short ball. You're on Facebook and all the... Yeah, I'm Where on Facebook. We? I don't pay too much attention there. I'm also on TikTok as well. So. Yeah. How's TikTok going for you? Do, you, do you? do you get a good audience on there or... Oh, it just depends. Some yeah. videos go crazy. Some videos... Do nothing. Yeah, so. tell me about it. Yeah. I can tell me about it. Uh, but, guys, make sure you go and follow him on all your social medias and whatnot, the short ball. Uh, very, very exciting, mate. And I think uh, I think next season I might have to lean into you a little bit more because uh, I simply can't keep up with it all to the depth that you do. And, uh, yeah, as I said, off the top, guys, uh, you know, I've, I've always looked at your gear on social media, mate, and always just thought this is unreal. But sitting here talking to you and just being able to – like we, we, we've got a sort of script here, but I've gone off – script pretty heavily today just talking about random guys some of them that i like some of them i've just heard their names and asked him about and mate you've been across absolutely everyone so that sort of dedication i absolutely fucking love it mate yeah no, i appreciate that mate i try my best i love it unreal uh mate i look forward to having you back on in the future to get across all these things we might even touch base next week when it yeah. comes to grand final week yeah, and see that. what we've got uh thank you for coming in brother Cheers, mate. Appreciate it. Go follow the short ball on all of your social medias. Sorry?